the site for the MasterCard World Diving Trials, one of Canada's best, the Pan Am Pool in Winnipeg. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Armitage along with Janet Nutter. Next to an Olympic medal, the most important that a diver can win in his or her career would be a world championship medal. And Janet, it's important to point out right from the outset that only two divers in each event will qualify here in Winnipeg for the world championships in Perth. So the competition is going to be good. Steve, we're going to have great competition. We have our veterans here, Anna Decision and David Bedard, but they're going to be challenged by some of the youngsters who really would like to make that team. Okay, first stop, we'll We'll take a look at the highlights from the men's and women's one meter event. Now this is Barbara Bush and she has been trailing in this competition Mary Di Piero so this is a crucial dive for her. Her final dive a forward one and one half somersault with one full twist. That's a good dive it was nice in the air but just a little bit short of that vertical seven, position. Seven, one half, seven, one half, seven, one half, in the hurdle she seven, has a one half, very seven, nice half. hurdle up in the air, good twisting action, but as she checks out of the dive, she just leaves her feet a little bit short of the vertical. Barb conferring with her coach, Herb Flewelling. Now, this is Mary DiPiero from Thunder Bay. As we mentioned, she's been leading in the competition. Mary's final dive, an inward one and one half somersault in the pike position. This is normally a great dive for Mary. She leaves it to the end. A fabulous last dive. She was high, the position was good, and a very clean entry going into the water. She's very strong. As she jumps off the board, she has a dynamic pop, and it gets her very high, and she has lots of room to line up before she hits the water. So the experience of Mary DiPiero of Thunder Bay coming through in the women's one-meter competition, she defeats Barbara Bush. Now, what about the men's competition? This has been nip and tuck all the way through between two more veterans, David Bedard and Larry Flewelling. This is David Bedard. Now, he is leading Larry by 1.5 points. He needs this dive, a reverse one-and-one-half somersault with one-and-one-half twist. He does a very good job off the board and through the air, but as he goes into the water, he lets his legs go just past the vertical position. He will not score, score eight, but he should get some good scores. A great hurdle here, strong, good twisting action. He's up over the board, he has lots of room, but he just digs down a little bit too deep as he goes into the water. Now Larry Flewelling trailing by 1.5 points. Larry will do exactly the same dive that we just saw David perform, so he knows what he has to do. He has to do it better if he wants to win this competition. He's been diving for a long time. He certainly has the experience. A lovely dive high up in the air. Also, just a little bit past the vertical position, it's a toss-up. In my mind, which dive was better? It's up to the judges to make that decision. A good, strong hurdle here. He's high off the board, possibly a little bit of crimp as he leaves the board in his legs, but a very nice dive. Bring up a seven! <laughs> Show us no seven. Seven. Larry Flewelling saying, Lucky bring seven. up the sevens. He knows what he needs. He knows bring it's a close competition. Really it's close. in the hands of the judges, and the judges, without benefit of slow-mo, have decided that Larry's dive was indeed a better one. He wins the competition by the slimmest of margins, one-third of a point. David Bedard and Larry Flewelling have been friends for a long time, and they are indeed fierce competitors, but on this occasion, it was Larry Flewelling over David Bedard in the men's one meter by the slimmest of margins, one third of a point. Now the question is, will that kind of competition continue in the men's three meter? The standings after nine dives show Flewelling on top, leading Mark Rourke by eight points. David Bedard really not a factor. He trails Flewelling by 72 points. This is Mark Rourke from the University of Alabama. This is his tenth dive. A difficult dive, a back two and one half somersault in the pike position, and he does an excellent job. He has a great position in the air, a nice tight pike, and goes in the water very cleanly. A very strong jump, and he pops his legs right up into the pike, so he has lots of room, comes out at board level. He loses his legs a little bit, but the judges can't see that from the side. 
And we have nine judges of poolside, and this is how you arrive at that 67.50 total. You take off the two bottom scores, the two top, add up the remaining five, and multiply by the degree of difficulty. Now the 24-year-old from Edmonton, Larry Flewelling, his 10th dive. A backward one-and-one-half somersault with two-and-one-half twists. The degree of difficulty on this is 2.8. very strong off the board but as he was going down into the water he just went a little bit past the vertical position he'll get good scores but probably won't get any eights or nines strong takeoff here nice twisting action just a little bit of a bobble on the bottom larry conferring with his coach his father herb flewelling sevens and a 7.5s 60.484 larry flewelling remember he's the leader of the competition now this is robert baribo a 25 year old the oldest male diver in the competition his dive a back one and one half somersault with three and one half twists the degree of difficulty on this steve is 3.2 a very difficult dive Baribo currently sitting in third place after nine dives. Oh, he missed that one. The takeoff, he got a little bit cockeyed coming off, getting into his twisted little too early, so when he entered the water, he couldn't control the dive. Here he leads with his shoulder, he drops it, so his whole twisting action, he loses his legs, and he's also way past the vertical. He will not be happy with his scores on that one. And the judges weren't very kind either. Five and a half, sixes, 54.72 the total for Barry Bow. So the standings after 10 dies. Flewelling leads Mark Rourke by one point, 20 points separating Rourke and Barry Bow. 11th and final dive of the competition for Mark Rourke. A reverse one and one half somersault with two and one half twists. A great dive. It was high. It was a nice position in the air, and he went in the water quite cleanly. He has a very good hurdle position. If anything, he's moving just a little bit forward off the board, but he has great control and lots of height. A nice dive. You're only one behind. Six and a half sevens for a total of 60.90 for Mark Roy. Now the leader, Larry Fluella. His final dive on the men's three meter. His dive, a reverse one and one half somersault with three and one half twists. The degree of difficulty on this is 3.3. It's a very difficult dive. He has to complete the three and a half twists. Mark just did two and a half twists. This is a little bit more difficult. Now a great final dive. He got, did a very good job. As he lined up, he went just past that vertical position. You see here a nice hurdle position. And he's up into the twist. He's twisting well. Lots of room. But as he comes out, he doesn't stop his action. He just lets it carry past that vertical entry. And the score is for Flewelling. Sevens and seven and a halves for a total of 72.27. So that should lock up the competition for Larry Flewelling. Now, what could Robert Baribo do? Remember, he is challenging for second place, and only two divers in each event will go to the World Championships. His dive, a reverse one and one half somersault with three and one half twists. That's not a great dive for Robert. He had a good jump and a good start, but he really lost the control on the bottom going into the water. The judges will deduct for that. He looks just a little bit off balance as he takes off there. He loses his legs through the air and cannot hold that vertical entry. Well, there. Good job. Barabo needed eight and a halves to make the Canadian team. He got six and a half, so he will not travel down under in the men's three meter. Larry Flewelling wins it. Twelve and a half points up on Mark Rourke, so it'll be Flewelling and Rourke going to Perth. ...have found a terrific way to wash away their worries of the day.
Talk about a cushy assignment. It won't be that easy for Evla Poivre as she warms up to take on the veteran Mary DiPiero and her Quebec teammate Annie Pelche in the women's three meter. The bridge to the World Championships in Perth begins in Winnipeg. After eight of ten dives in the women's three-meter, Mary DiPiero leads Annie Pelletier by 18 points and Evelyn Boisvert by 23 and a half. And this is 20-year-old Evelyn Boisvert, a phys ed student from the University of Montreal, her ninth dive. The dive, a reverse, one and one half somersault with two and one half twists. She does a very good job on the dive with nice action in the air. She has a great position in her hurdle. She's strong. She gets a good jump right off the board into a good twisting action and straight in on the bottom, just a little bit of splash. And the scores for Evelyn Boisvert, seven, seven and a half, for a total of 62.64. This is 16-year-old Annie Pelche from Montreal, a springboard specialist. Her dive, a reverse two and one half somersault in the tuck position. The degree of difficulty on this is 2.8. An excellent dive. It was high, it was dynamic. And she went in the water just a little bit past the vertical, but it was a beautiful dive in the air. A great hurdle position, way up into a nice tight tuck. She kicks out at board level and lots of room to drop. She's going to be a talented girl in a few years. And the judges agree with your assessment of that dive. Seven, seven and a half for a total of 60.48 for the former national level gymnast, Annie Pelche. And now the veteran, 22-year-old Mary DiPiero, who attends Lakehead University in Thunder Bay. This is Mary's most difficult dive in her list, a back two and one half somersault in the pike position. The degree of difficulty is 3.0. She does a great job on top, however, she just faded back a little bit, so she was unable to control the entry position. It's important to get a good, strong pop right into your pike, and she does that and has a lovely position, but as she comes out, she continues pulling, so the scores reflect that. Okay. Not the best of dies for Mary, and I think she'd be the first to tell you that. The standings after nine of ten dies, DiPiero's lead cut to nine points over Peltier and 12 points in front of Evelyn Boisvert. This is Evelyn, 20 years of age. She certainly has lots of experience, so she should be able to control her nerves here. Her tenth and final dive. The dive, an inward two and one half somersault in the tuck position. This normally is one of her best dives. She saves it to the very end. She can always count on it. An excellent dive, Steve. It was high, it was tight, she had great position, and straight in on the bottom. She's going to get some good scores here. A very strong jump into a great tuck position out at board level and almost no splash. She is mounting a serious challenge for first and second place. Seven and a halves and eights for Evelyn Boisbert, a total of 63.99. Boy, that puts a lot of pressure on young Annie Pelche. She needs a strong dive, eights possibly. This is her final dive of the competition. A back one and one half somersault with two and one half twists. The degree of difficulty is 2.8. She's a very young diver. She's got lots of years ahead of her, so you know it's going to be tough if, to get this dive in. She's under incredible pressure. from the, the board so she was a little bit lower than she should be. Let's see what the judges do with that. You see here on the back takeoff, she just moves back a little bit. So she's not as high as she needs to be to finish the dive in a good position in the air. She needed eights and she gets sevens and seven and a halves for a total of 60.48. Not as good a dive as Evelyn Boisvert and that will drop Pelche back. 
Now, Mary DiPiero, her 10th and final dive. She leads the competition. Mary's dive, a back one and one half somersault with two and one half twists. This normally is a great dive for Mary. She counts on it. That's why she puts it at the end of her list. And she does a good dive. I've seen her do it a lot better than that. It probably is enough. On the takeoff here, she's just moving back a little bit. She gets into a nice looking twist, but she lines up and doesn't have quite enough room to get in straight up and down in the vertical position. Six and a halves and sevens for Mary Di Piero, and that gives her the title seven points over Boisvert. And Evelyn takes second place by less than a half a point over Peltier. Having survived Winnipeg, Mary DiPiero is looking forward to Perth. I think three meter internationally is my best event, and I hope to come hopefully in the top three, maybe in the top four, like at Goodwill Games. Another diver taking dead aim at the World Championships at Perth is Angela Borthwick. She grew up in Kindersley, Saskatchewan, but trained in Saskatoon. And now she makes her home in Winnipeg. Well, in Saskatoon, there wasn't really too much uh, with the diving club and at one point I decided that I wanted to take the sport seriously. I thought about different places and I decided that you know Jim would be the best coach for me and that's when I decided to move to Winnipeg and train on a full-time basis with him. Like most who aspire to be world-class athletes, the decision to leave home is never an easy one. Um, it, it was quite hard, I think especially because I was still in high school when I moved. I got a lot of speed. The training to achieve her goals is relentless, but in order to improve, Angela had to recognize her shortcomings. One of them is my fitness level, and I do have to increase that a little bit more to reach the goals that I want to reach. But, you know, we're slowly, Jim and I are slowly working together on them, and, you know, slowly we're conquering all of them. Angela wore the maple leaf for the first time at a major event in New Zealand, a chance to gain valuable international experience. Last year when I made Commonwealth Games team, uh, that was, you know, a very big goal achievement for me. It's something that I worked really hard for. And uh, just being at the games and seeing that all, it, it's really hard to explain the, the feeling of being at such a game. Angela wants more of that special feeling at the Worlds in Perth. Good afternoon, diving. Angela speaking. When not in the pool, she's still involved with diving. She works to promote the sport in her adopted province of Manitoba. What I do is I travel to different communities in the province and promote the sport of diving and tell them how good it is. And how good will Angela be on this day in the women's 10 meter? Her main opposition will come from the defending Canadian champion, Anna Decision. The Pan Am Pool has been the site for some great diving, but best is yet to come in the women's tower and a decision. The leader after six dives, followed by Angela Borthwick and Paige Gordon. Anna's first place margin, 21 points. This is Paige Gordon, who's putting a towel on that board. Is there any particular reason for that, Janet? Yes, Steve. Uh, it's a rubberized surface, and it gets rid of the, the water from the divers fairly well, but if there's a lot of traffic in the same spot, some of the divers feel maybe a little slippery, so they put a towel down so they feel sure of their footing when they come off the board. She's doing a forward three and one half somersault in the pike position, which is a very difficult dive, and she wants to feel confident of her takeoff. A fairly good dive. It was nice on the start. However, she's just not getting her entries today. She seems to be having a little bit of difficulty finding that vertical position as she goes in the water. You can see here on the takeoff that she lands with a solid takeoff using that towel as her footing and has a good pike position but loses it right on the bottom. She trails Borthwick by 17 points in the battle for second place. There you see her scores. Sixes, six and a halves for a total of 56.70. Anne Montmany from Point Claire. Anne's dive and inward two and one half somersault in the pike position. The degree of difficulty on this is 2.8. I'm very impressed with this young girl's tower diving. She's only been up there for a year. 
and she's doing a great job. And that was a great dive. It was strong. Her pike position, her head is right on her knees. Very pretty in the air. A good jump. Look at her head position on her legs, and she's straight into the water, right in on the vertical position. And Janet, the judges liked it two sevens, seven and a halves for Anne for a total of 60.48 as she talks with her coach, Don Webb, talking about her entry. Angela Bortwick, native of Kindersley, Saskatchewan, trained in Saskatoon, now living and working out in Winnipeg. So if there's a hometown favorite, Angela would be it. Her dive, a back two and one half somersault in the pike position. This normally is a very good dive for Angela. She saves it towards the end of her list of dives. She can count on it. Let's see how she can do it today. An excellent dive. She was had a strong jump, good position in the air. The only criticism I have is the entry was a little bit heavy. Strong off the tower into a good-looking pike position. Lots of stretch on the bottom. She must have just lined up a little bit in front of her head to bring up that extra splash. We can do it. Thank you. We can do it, says Angela. Seven, seven and a half for a total of 64.38. And now the leader. A student at the University of Toronto, Anna Decision. Anna's dive will also be a back two and a half somersault in the pike position. It's interesting when the girls have their dives back to back like this. The judges can watch one dive, see the next one, and have a very good comparison for their scoring. She backed off off the tower on that and really lost the control on the bottom. She's going to be a little disappointed with her scores that she's going to receive on this dive. On the takeoff here, she doesn't have her usual strong jump. She just fades back a little. So when she comes out, she's got too much, too much movement and she can't hold on to that vertical entry. We should point out that Anna has a history of bad second to last dives and this is no exception fives five and a half for a total of 47.85 but she still leads with a four and a half point lead over angela and montmany has replaced Paige gordon in third place by one tenth of a point and this is Paige gordon about to dive without benefit of the towel and her final dive of the competition her dive a back one and one half somersault with two and one half twist the degree of difficulty is 2.8 she leaves this back twister to the very end because she does do a very solid, consistent dive here. And she'll need a great dive to move into second place. And that is a very good dive. It was nice in the air. Again, a bit of a heavy entry. She shows lots of control and has a very solid twist. Good checkout and straight into the water, but she does bring up a little bit of splash. And the scores for Paige Gordon, sevens for a total of 58.80. She needed higher than that to make a move. And Montmagny needs seven and a half to stay in third and ahead of Paige, so a little bit of pressure on Anne here. Yes, it's a very tight race right here, and her dive will also be a back one and a half somersault with two and one half twists. A very pretty dive in the air. However, she let it go by the vertical seven, position. Six, seven, seven, six, seven, seven, She's using her six, head a little bit as she comes off the tower and gets too much movement, so is unable to control the dive to stop the somersault as she lines up going into the entry. Anne's inexperience coming through there. Six and a halves and sevens for a total of 57.12. And her coach, Don Webb, confirming that that will drop her to fourth place. Angela Borthwick now trails decision by five points. Steve, this is a brand new dive in Angela's list and an extremely difficult dive for the women. 
an inward three and one half somersault in the tuck position. The degree of difficulty is 3.2. She has to spin forwards going in towards the tower and complete three and a half somersaults before she enters the water. So there's just not enough time. See here, she's cutting down a little bit. And her tuck position, she looks like she's almost slipping. And when she comes out, she must have thought she was in trouble because she buried her head and went way past the vertical. And I think she'd be the first to tell you that she simply blew that one. Angela Borthwick getting fours, four and a half for a total of 41.28 as she confers with her coach, Jim Lambie. Very good job. She gets a kiss and encouragement from Jim. Now, and a decision. She's always had a history of bad second to last dives, but good last dives. And this dive is always her last dive, and it's a great dive. A back one and one half somersault with two and one half twists. The DD on this is 2.8. Safe to say that this would be her favorite dive, too. I would think so. That's an extremely nice last dive. It was pretty in the air, technically very good, and straight in, clean entry. A good, strong jump, nice twisting action. She's such a pretty diver in the air. She looks nice. She has clean lines, and the judges like it. Okay, your arms perfect. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. That was a good job. Thank you. Now we can uh, go back and relax and uh, plan tomorrow's workout. <laughs> Forget tomorrow. Today she wins the tower. 30 points in front of Angela Borthwick. For Angela, the hard work pays off in a trip to the World Championships. I'm very excited about it. Um, I'm, I've dove with a lot, I guess, a lot of the same countries and a lot of the same divers. So the, the caliber that there's going to be there is going to be very, very tough. So right now all I can do is just train really hard, expecting the best out of everybody at, at that meet. And this was the dive that consolidated first place for Anna. Well, I was trying not to look at the last score, so I didn't know how far ahead I was or anything. But um, I just, I found uh, my arm was sort of hurting me during the competition, and I was determined not to let it uh, screw up my entry. So I was just determined to be really tight on the entry, and it worked. The battle for supremacy on the men's tower will involve Bruno Fournier, the summer nationals champion, against the wily veteran from Point Claire, David Bedard. From more than 30 feet in the air, they hit the water at speeds in excess of 60 miles an hour. from the Pan Am pool signals the final event in the competition, the men's stem meter. Point Claire's David Bedard, the one to catch. He leads Bruno Fournier by 20 points, who in turn has a 13-point margin on this man, Bill Hayes. Bill's dive and inward three and one half somersault in the tuck position. The DD is 3.2. Shame. It's a great dive on top. However, he came out extremely late, went way past that vertical entry position. Good jump, great spinning action, but as he comes out, you can see he's already underneath the somersault, so he can just do nothing but go long. Well, Bill is smiling, but I don't think he'd be happy with those scores. Fours, four and a halves, and fives for a total of 42.24. Now back on the tower, the ninth dive of the event for Bruno Fournier. His dive, a forward three and one half somersault in the pike position. The DD is 3.0. It's important that he gets this dive jumped high above the board and really initiates the pike somersaulting action to be able to complete the three and a half somersaults before he enters the water. A 
great dive. It was smooth, it was controlled, and he went in the water with a very clean entry. He has a high pop and gets into a very tight pike position and lots of room to line up. As he enters the water, he carries the somersault motion under the water to help uh, the entry, the splash to go down with him. Sevens and seven and a halves for Bruno Fournier for a total of 67.50. David Bedard, the leader of the competition, his ninth dive. This is an arm stand dive. An arm stand cut through reverse one and one half somersault in the tuck position. The men all must do an arm stand dive in their final list of dives. David just chooses to do it towards the end of his list. Now that was a very good arm stand. He held it. It was a nice dive through the air. However, on the bottom, he missed his lineup for the entry. He pulled it past the vertical. Very strong, good-looking arm stand. Lots of control. Nice position in the air. But as he enters the water, he's really scooping through the vertical position. You know why I hated it? You had it cold. Got to about here. That's when you need to lock up and think entry. You check the pull. Pulled it through a little bit. Long. It's safe. You're going to win, most likely. But well, deep. Coach, that remains to be seen. Fournier has moved to within four points of David Bedard in the competition. Now, this is the final dive for Bill Hayes. He's currently in third place, and he's seven and a half and eights to challenge for second. His dive, a reverse two and one half somersault in the tuck position. Most of the men are doing three and one half. He's using a simpler dive because he normally scores eights and nines and really counts on this dive. Now, that's not a good dive for Bill. He moved out off the tower in the start, so he just didn't have enough room to complete the dive. He was very short of that vertical entry position. And the takeoff here, you can see the movement too far out from the tower. He has a nice jump, but it's just moving out. When he kicks out, he's short of the vertical and just can't pull straight in. Six and a half and sevens for Bill Hayes, and that is not enough to allow him to challenge for second place with his tenth and final dive of the competition here in Winnipeg. Now, this is the final dive for Bruno Fournier. His dive and inward three and one half somersault in the tuck position. The degree of difficulty is 3.2. It's a lot of pressure on this young man right now. It's a close competition. dive it was nice in the air it was strong it, it was controlled the only criticism i have is a, on the entry it was a little bit heavier than you'd like to see the divers do a good strong jump here great tuck position a nice pike out but there is that splash on the entry what a great time for bruno fournier to nail a dive seven and a halves and eights for a total of 72 points Boy, does that put a ton of pressure on the veteran David Bedard. He needs seven and a halves and eights to stay on top. And his dive will carry the same degree of difficulty as Bruno Fournier. Yes, a back one and one half somersault with three and one half twists. David saves this dive to the end. It's a solid dive for him. He counts on it, and normally he does get the good scores on this dive. A great looking dive in the air, however, he missed the entry position. He was not solid and he rolled past that vertical. The takeoff here is moved back just a little bit. It causes problems if you start the dive wrong. It's hard to control the dive on the bottom. That's why he washed way past that vertical entry. Bedard needed seven and a half and eight. He got sixes and six and a half for a total of 59.52. Not enough. I didn't try. Anyway, he's going to get you with that. And get him he does. Fournier by eight points. Bedard a costly final dive. And what was Fournier thinking about going into his final dive? I didn't know where I stand in the meet, but I knew I knew it was really close between me and David. And I didn't know where Bill was because he did a really, really good uh, back three and a half. 
and uh, it's it, it got me uh, very worried and I had to do my last three dives really well to to have a spot on the team and uh, I was surprised to find out that uh, I was only trailing by five points before the last dive and then uh, I did a really good inward three and a half and I think that's why I, it turned around my way this time. And turn it did. Those who made the team before we leave the Pan Am pool. It's still cold in Winnipeg, but here are those who are heading to the warmth of Down Under as members of the Canadian team. In past world championships, Canadians have been shut out of the medals. Janet, is that likely to happen in Perth? Steve, I'd like to say they're definitely going to be getting medals, but it's going to be a very tough competition in Australia with the top Americans, Chinese and Soviets. But who knows, our divers may just come through. And it goes without saying that we wish them all the best of luck. Our next diving coverage on Sports Weekend will be March 23rd. We'll be live from the Etobicoke Olympium with the Winter Nationals. And now for Janet Nutter, I'm Steve Armitage, returning you to Sports Weekend Control and Brian Williams.